for those of you who are all right well good evening everyone for those of you who don't know me my name is gary weisserman and i'm bernard zell's extremely proud head of school and i want to thank you all for being here tonight for what promises to be a meaningful session i certainly know how difficult it can be for families to arrange their schedules to attend evening meetings so please know that your presence here is very much appreciated we are incredibly excited to welcome your children to school in just a little over a week. We continue to believe that in-person education is the best way to meet the educational and socio-emotional needs of our students. There's really no genuine substitute for the on-campus BZ experience, and particularly for our littles. Many of you were able to attend our August 13th webinar on campus safety, and so you're already aware that we've taken every possible precaution to ensure that our students and our faculty will be safe on campus. So while we'll undoubtedly touch on a few COVID related topics, tonight's program focuses instead on preparing for what promises to be an exciting year uh, of amazing experiences for your children. In just a few moments, I'm going to turn the microphone over to our amazing head of early childhood, Abby Aloni, who has quite a bit of information to share with us. Our ECE staff, like all of our faculty, have been hard at work all week in preparation for the first day of school, and so there's lots of exciting things to go over. And then afterwards, we'll take questions and follow-up questions. You're encouraged to submit questions at any time using the chat feature. Only the host will see what you type, and we will try our best to moderate in such a way as to combine similar questions so that we can maximize the use of our time together. And with that, before we get started, I would like to share Abyssal Torah and in doing so, introduce our, our theme for the upcoming year, which is Ahrayut. Here at Bernard Zell, we have 54 Jewish values that we've identified as being core and central to our kids' education, and which we try and get them to explore on a regular basis. And it happens that the first one is an appropriate one uh, for this year, and that is Ahrayut. Uh, Ahrayut is a specific kind of social responsibility. It's a moral belief that as individuals, we're responsible both for ourselves and for the well-being of the other. And so what I'd like to do is take a, a really close look at the root of that word, uh, etymologically, but also conceptually, uh, because I think it will shed a little bit of light on what it is that we want to teach our kids. If you look at the word achrayut, it begins with the first letter of the Aleph bet, which is Aleph, reminding us of the primary importance of, of this value. It's also the letter that we use to abbreviate ani, or me, or self, reminding us that we, ourselves, bear responsibility. The next letter is chet. So we have aleph chet, which means ach, which is brother. That reminds me that I am obligated to take care of my brother. When we add the next letter, which is resh, we get acher, which is other. And this is the root of achrayut. So the other happens to be a key phrase in Judaism because we are constantly reminded through the Torah that we were once the stranger and that we must always remember that we're responsible for the welfare of those around us. When we add the next letter, we get achare, and that means after. And that is intended to be a reminder that the consequences of our action are always things that we must bear in mind no matter what we do. When we add the vav, we get acharav, meaning after him which reminds us that we follow our leaders only when they have the welfare and responsibility of everyone, including the other in mind. And then we add the taf. And when we add the taf, we've gone literally from the start to the end of the Aleph and we end up with achrayut, which is the moral responsibility we have for those around us, including the stranger amongst us. And we talk about this in a different way than we talk about responsibility when we say, I am accountable or responsible for my actions. Instead, this focuses on the positive mitzvah to acknowledge I have the responsibility to make the needs of others my own. And these are the lessons that we want to teach our kids about responsibility. And uh, I hope you'll, you'll join us in our year-long study of what we believe to be a core Jewish value. So with that, it is my pleasure to uh, turn to Abby Aloni to have her talk a little bit about tonight's agenda. And and uh, to tell us about what's happening in early childhood. So Abby, take it away. Thank you, Gary. So nice. 
first of all, as I'm sitting here scrolling through, it's so nice to see so many of your faces and even you shy people who just have your names. I'm so excited to see your names as well. It's just so fabulous to have us all back together and to know that we will be together with your children soon. And um, before I get to the evening's agenda, I just wanna say we've been at school since Monday and it has really been so amazing to have our early childhood teaching family back together. It feels so wonderful. Our teachers are getting their classrooms ready, working on our curriculum, thinking about how we support you and your children. And it's just been a tiring but most fabulous uh, week here. And it just makes the anticipation of having all of you back with us, uh, your children back with us, that much more exciting. So I want to thank you. One of the things I always say in these kind of meetings, and you, many of you have heard me say this, and to our new families, you'll hear this a lot, is we've got you. We've got you, we're here, and we're so excited to um, have you be with us this year. So looking at our agenda, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, about early childhood this year and things you can expect, some things I know you have on your mind and review. Um, we will have a question and answer period. Hopefully we do a good job answering most of your questions. After that, we're going to say goodbye to our families who have been, who, uh, have been with us in years past, and we are going to then ask our new families, our new parents, to stay on so we can do give you a little bit more information about the year and things that you might be thinking about or wondering about, and then I'll also answer specific questions you might have as new families to uh, Bernard Zell. So, um, Gary, can you go to the next slide? Thanks. So first I want to just introduce you to um, our, our most amazing early childhood facu faculty. Um, for our nursery team this year in our nursery A classroom, we have Tammy Mizrahi and Jory Weinberg. And then of course, Hagit will be joining them as well. For nursery B, we have Rina Grosser and Emily Portugal. And also you see Hagit's picture again because she'll be supporting in both classrooms um, as well. Our JK team, three classrooms again. For those of you who have been here uh, before or had children in JK previously, we have a little switching of some teams, but still the most amazing faculty. In JK 103, we have Ms. Cohen, Ms. Iglo, Ms. Levine, uh, and Hamor Hagi. You'll notice that for some of our teachers, they're in two classrooms. I'll explain a little bit more of that as we uh, move into uh, the rest of the evening. In JK 104, we have Miss Elliott and Miss Spiesman. Miss Levine will also be supporting in that classroom and Tamara Hagid. And in JK 105, Miss Schraber and Miss Rubin. Miss Hurt will be, uh, is one of our new teachers at uh, Bernard Zell. She's actually an alumna um, and she happens to be the daughter of Andy Hurt, who is one of our SK teachers and she'll be joining us. We're excited to have her. And I love pointing out that her first grade teacher was actually Karen Levitt, our head of lower school. Well, and an even more interesting thing, one of the teachers she's working with, Ms. Schraber, was her JK teacher, so that is uh, also exciting. So on to senior kindergarten, our SK 107 teachers are Ms. Fujinaka and Ms. Gelfon. Ms. Gorlick, who many people know from JK 104 last year, will be joining some of our SK uh, classrooms. And Hamar Andrea is back as our Jewish studies lead teacher. SK 108 is Ms. Ato and Ms. McKenna. Ms. Hurt will be helping her, helping in that class as well. And SK 110 is Mr. Hurt and Ms. Rasher and Ms. Gorlick will be helping in that, that classroom. So as we always do, and even though this was quite an interesting summer, it didn't stop our team from continuing to grow professionally. We think of that as a parallel process with your children. We're always wanting your children to learn and grow, and it's the same with our faculty. So we were quite busy this summer, not only thinking about reopening um, and how we can make your children's experience and your experience an exceptional one, but we did a lot of professional growth from going to the Erickson Institute, um, and thinking about supporting children in math and science, um, the Opal School Summer Symposium, which is a wonderful early childhood school in Portland. Um, we, many of us took a course on the ecology of listening, listening to each other and listening to children. Um, all types of different professional development over the course of the summer. Uh, and that's something I think that is a real hallmark of Bernard Zell and Shamit Day School. Our board and our head of school, Gary, we is are very 
much concern with ensuring that our teachers are always growing and learning. And keep going. In terms of initiatives for this school year, obviously we're going to have a continued focus on our social emotional learning and our mindfulness. Very important for this year. We know that we need to really uh, as we always do, but even more importantly, our children have been out of school and we need to hone in and make sure that we are supporting them um, from a social emotional lens. We're also going to continue focusing on intellectual curiosity and foundational academic learning, all grounded in preschool and kindergarten standards. And then we're also, as always, going to have a continued focus on seamless Judaism. I'm going to stop for a moment and introduce my partner and colleague, Hagit Lewis, who's going to share a little bit about that. So I am just like Abby, so excited to see all your faces. I cannot wait to have your mishpacha, your family back in school and for the new family to, um, to get to meet you and your children. And I really want to blow the shofar because today is the first day or tonight is the first day of Elul. Um, but I'm not going to do it in Zoom. Uh, but later on, you will hear the kids and you may hear them say that they want a shofar, so it's totally my fault. Um, but you can get them for their bar mitzvah or even before. Um, so my name is Chagit Lewis and I will be joining um, and working with the nursery and JK team. Um, and really, as Abby said, uh, to us, a seamless Judaism. In a nursery and early childhood, in a nursery and JK, we really try to um, take them and you on that Jewish journey um, in Barnardsdale. No matter where you come from, we want to be your partner. We introduce the language, the, the values to the kids on, on, on play based, uh, singing, and really working with a general study teacher to integrate the whole thing. When the kids finish JK and go to SK, we start with a little bit more formal uh, program. We're using Chalav Udvash, where the structure of the language change a little bit, uh, but the Jewish value uh, continue, it gets stronger. And then the kids will go to first grade and first grade they have amazing teacher and she may be even here um, on our call um, that is going to use Tel Am, uh, where the kids are going to learn Hebrew, read and write. Um, and this is a great opportunity for the parents. If you want to learn with the kids, it will be a great time. Uh, but this year we changed the structure where every grade will have a general study teacher working with a Jewish study teachers. Um, and they're all going to work together to create a curriculum that is really rich in Jewish value. Uh, just, just as Jerry, uh, Gary, sorry, described uh, the word achrayut. Uh, we are going to work on how do we take a chayut um, of one another and each other. Um, and I will mention later uh, my uh, Jewish experiences for family. Uh, I also do a lot of events for um, families, so current family know about it, and I'm looking forward to have you participate. And new families, uh, there is a lot coming up, so we'll talk about it in our next Thank session. you, Hadid. Okay, I also want to share some uh, new initiatives that our early uh, childhood team will be participating in. We are fortunate that we were accepted um, to uh, participate in the Paradigm Project, which is a Jewish early childhood grassroots organization that we work with, um, a community of practice on racial justice in the Jewish early childhood to classroom. Three of us will be participating in this year-long work that we'll be bringing back to the rest of the faculty. Um, and this is an initiative uh, throughout the entire school, so we're very proud to be partnering um, with Paradigm and to bringing this um, learning and thinking to our youngest children and their families. We're also, we were also accepted to uh, be a part of the Matan Institute to support inclusion in the Jewish Early Childhood Classroom. We'll be working with uh, educators from throughout the country, from Jewish early childhood preschools, to again think about how do we support all the students who are in our classroom. So more information will be coming about coming out about that, but we're very excited to be a part of that uh, for this coming school year. So what will things look like in our early childhood classrooms this year? So I want to start where I always start, which is uh, the importance of creating a homeschool connection. We know things are going to feel different this year. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to welcome you 
physically into our classrooms and into the school, at least for a while. We'll see how things go. But we, what we do want you to know is you are still a part of what we are doing. And we have learned so much from the spring um, about how we can include you and how we can make uh, people who are not able to physically be in the classroom a really big part of our early childhood community. Uh, you will hear more about that from your classroom's teacher, class, your, teach, your children's teachers uh, during the back to school night. Um, but throughout this week, it's really been amazing hearing our students' voices as our teachers have begun their virtual home visits with you and your children. Uh, the teachers have also really appreciated your insights from their intake conversations. So if you haven't yet had the opportunity to connect with your children's teacher, teachers, we hope you can do so before the first day of school. Um, so you can expect that this communication, the partnership will continue throughout the school year, so never hesitate to contact us. And please also make sure that you're logging into your BZ account every week to read about what's going on in your children's classrooms and to view the many, many, many pictures and videos that we share. You'll always have an updated post on Fridays, so that might be if you're only choosing one day to check in Fridays or waiting till after Shabbat and doing that on Sunday might be a really good opportunity for you. And the information that we, we will provide, will, we hope will be jumping off points for conversations with your children about how things are going at school and what they're learning and what they're doing. In terms of cohorts, as I believe most of you know, but I think it's important that I reiterate, the students will be remaining with the same group or cohort each day. And the cohort sizes are around eight to nine in nursery, 12 to 13 students in junior kindergarten and 15 to 16 students in senior kindergarten. It's important to note that the cohorts will not be combined at any time, including on the playground or during outside exploration areas. So the children are really going to be kept in that small cohort, that small bubble. The same faculty is going to be assigned to the same group of children as you saw in those slides. The only uh, people who will see more than one cohort will be Hamar Hagid, who will be going into all three JK classrooms. She will be virtually going into the nursery and JK nursery classrooms. And then the associate teachers, we have uh, associate teachers are assigned to either two JK classes to senior kindergarten classes or one JK and one SK, and that will be consistent. In terms of the nursery uh, children and classrooms, I am going to be the extra support in that classroom, so I will be their consistent uh, extra person when they, need, when they need help or support or just uh, to be a part of the classroom. Um, let's see. Mr. Todd is still going to be here for those of you who are new to school. Um, you may have met Mr. Todd over the course of the spring and summer when we uh, invited you to uh, different events that we've, uh, we've shared. And he is our most amazing um, uh, musical early childhood rock star. And he comes in to do music in nursery and JK with uh, Hadid, and he also leads both our nursery JK and senior kindergarten um, Kavalat Shabbat. So you will get to hear a lot from him, and he is very beloved by all of us. Um, Mr. Todd will continue to join Hagit with music for nursery and JK, and SK students will have um, still have specials, but they're going to be in concentrated blocks. So, for example, for the first uh, uh, number of weeks of school. Kindergarten students will have music with Miss Dunn and she'll be with them every day uh, and um, be working with them during that time period and then they'll go to another special. More information from the teachers will be coming on that. And we're also one of, uh, getting a lot of questions um, about bathrooms this year and just wanna let you know if you don't already that every early childhood classroom uh, has their own bathroom. So that will be the bathroom that the children from each cohort will be using. So as you can see, we're really keeping them in quite a tight bubble um, to make sure that everyone stays safe. In terms of face co coverings with the young children, so when possible, we're going to be encouraging face coverings for our early childhood students. And we are going to, um, so as a result, we really need you to continue to practice mask wearing with your child leading up to the first day of school. Face coverings won't be worn while students are eating, drinking, sleeping, or napping. 
And, um, but it's important to know that strict and consistent physical distancing will always be practiced during the times when children are taking off their face masks. Uh, when we're engaging in activities outdoor where we're able to maintain social distancing, we will also be able to give children a mask break. Um, Again, as long as they're able to keep physical distance. We are going to be working throughout the day to find times where children can have mask breaks and do it safely. Um, we are going to be very, very flexible. We're going to get to know the kids, how they're doing, and we're going to support them in um, growing their tolerance for wearing the mask. Great news is I've been in contact throughout the whole summer with many, many um, early childhood programs throughout the Chicagoland and throughout the country. And from what I'm hearing, the children are really doing well. So we, as you know, believe our children are competent and we feel uh, with our support, they will also do well. Um, we are going to um, have lanyards that will attach to masks. So hopefully that will help children from losing them or having them fall to the ground when they are unmasking and pulling them down. And it's important to note that our educators will always be masked when we're, when we're with the uh, students. Um, we, you may have heard from Audris during last week's meeting that we are, we are uh, going to be using or providing face shields for the children. We recognize that not all safety measures are developmentally feasible as others, and we will adjust accordingly. And I think it's important to note we're, we are going to, we have things in place, and we're always going to be evaluating throughout the year of how things are working. That's with face coverings and everything that we're doing. Um, our older students have larger lung capacities, so they're more likely to need that extra level of protection while eating, um, and are probably similarly more able to wear face shields. But we're going to work with our youngest students on how to eat with a face shield, but also recognize that we both need to have that flexibility around shields at lunch. So we're going to see how it goes. If it really proves to be really challenging, um, we'll think about other tools and we'll always be making sure that they're distancing or eating outside. In terms of the social distancing, we also recognize that strict distancing is truly challenging with young children. Um, and as recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics, we're going to focus on more effective mitigation strategies, the most effective mitigation strategies for our young children. And these include hand hygiene, infection prevention, education for our staff and families, adult physical distancing from one another, the use of face coverings, cohorting and spending time outside. So as I mentioned, the reason for our cohorts is to really think of each class as a school family and that these will be the bubbles for our early childhood students and educators throughout the school day. So again, our team will be focusing on hygiene, sanitizing, redesigning spaces, and social emotional well-being of our students. Um, you can expect that we're gonna be cleaning more, we're wearing masks, and we're going to be looking at the material we use and the daily class flow a little differently. But the heart of what, we'll do, what we do will remain the same. It's really important that you know, because I know a lot of people have been asking, that we are going to provide comfort when needed as well as support with self-care skills. So that is absolutely our commitment to you. Um, uh, we are going to make sure that your children feel well-loved and given the attention that they need. Um, our, and our curriculum is going to align with uh, this theme of Ahrayut, so we are going to be teaching the children about hygiene and other practices that help to keep us all safe and healthy, and we'll also include the children's voice in how we go about um, caring for one another. It's also important to note that in the early ch childhood program, children will be able to play together within their co cohorts. Again, we're making that little bubble of very, very small groups. We are teaching them strategies about thinking about how they um, maybe make their bubble a little bigger. It's something we're always discussing with children, if, even in a normal year, that we all need our body space, but this year our body space might need to be a little bit larger. So examples of what it might look like would be individual sensory bins so the children can explore with their own materials, yet they're playing together, providing individual supply bags or bins for items that they might use on a daily basis, like pencils and glue sticks and scissors, and then certain exploratory materials will be available for use each day, but might be taken out of circulation for a 48-hour period for sanitizing and disinfecting. 
We'll have, as we always do, center style play areas that will accommodate small groups of children at a time. And we'll make sure that there's a lot of hand washing and sanitizer used when children move from center to center. And again, specific teaching and modeling around encouraging our children to develop a sense of personal space. In terms of drop off and pick up, before I get into the nitty gritty, I wanted to encourage you to begin to think about and practice with your child a routine for what that's going to look like. Don't think that you need to wait till the day before to start talking about that with your child. Talk to them about the fact that they're going to school and how excited you are and how they've already been able to meet their teacher through their virtual visit. And I'm hoping they're all listening to the stories that their teachers have recorded for them so that they're really getting to know them and help them to understand what is it going to look like when they leave you or their caregiver each day. Maybe it's three kisses and three hugs and then you're going into school. You create your own routine with your child so it feels most comfortable. As mentioned in, the, in a um, correspondence um, a few weeks ago, for the first three days of school, we are asking families to park and if possible, one parent or caregiver to drop off each day. The reason for this is we know it's important to you. You want to actually meet physically meet the people who are going to be with your children this year, and we want to do the same. And we are hoping it's also an easier transition for your children. Um, I am going to be sending a communication shortly a little bit about this, um, but if you can think about this now, to allow for the least amount of congestion, we're going to ask that SK students will arrive between 8.45 and 8.55 on those first three days, JK students arrive between 8.55 and 9.05, and nursery students between um, 9.05 and 9.10. Obviously, if you have children in multiple EC grades, you can make a choice about what time frame you would like to queue up. And we're going to have sp uh, spots where you'll know where to stand as you're waiting to enter. And, and, and when you check in, we'll have a teacher from your child's class come out to uh, meet you, say hello, and to walk your children in. Abby, with regards to drop off and pick up, there have been a couple of questions that have come in uh, about this. One is whether older siblings can pick up at the end of the day and whether first graders or older kids can walk their, their younger children to class. So I am just about to get to that. So I will- I'll I'm gonna stop asking questions bit. for now. <laughs> yeah, and, and we are going to have more information coming out very specifically about um, pick up and drop off, but once we get to that Thursday and we're having normal pickup, you will be able to arrive via the carpool line, or if you're arriving on foot, that's fine too. We are going to be using multiple entrances and exits this year so that we can continue to keep the children um, uh, in smaller groups. So um, Students in early childhood, all students in ch early childhood are going to enter through what we call entrance B. Entrance B is going to be the entrance that's off the playground, the climbing playground by the parking lot that leads straight into our early childhood wing by our uh, senior kindergarten classes. Again, if, you're, if this doesn't sound familiar, you will see people and we will help you through. As we always say with drop off and uh, uh, pick up any year, I even on normal years, you got to go through it a few times to really understand how it's done. And we promise we'll be there to support you. So when children, the, uh, we are asking that early childhood children arrive between 8.15 and 8.30. The only exceptions are if you have another a child who's a sibling in an older division. So if your child has a sibling in lower school, they can arrive beginning at eight o'clock. If your child has a sibling in middle school, they can arrive beginning at 745. Uh, in terms of siblings, we are going, Hagit and I are going to be outside every day as we normally are um, and supporting the children to walk into school. Um, only, if your only if your child's arriving earlier than eight o'clock can a sibling who is not in the early childhood wing walk their uh, sibling to the classroom? So if your child is coming with a middle school student, a middle school sibling, when that middle school sibling enters the building and it's before eight o'clock, they can walk and drop off uh, their sibling into their early childhood classroom. In terms of pickup, we are still um, 
figuring that out. So I'm not going to say anything. And I know Audris is on the call uh, in terms of older siblings picking up younger siblings. Um, I don't want to um, say something that's not exactly accurate and we, st we are still working on that. Um, let's see. Um, again, if your child is having struggling to enter into the school building, Hagit and I are going to be outside. I will support any nursery child who needs help coming into the school, and Hagit will support any JK child who needs support coming into school. And if a kindergarten child needs support, we will have one of those classroom teachers or Hamar Andrea come out to support them. Please know, if your child needs to be picked up, we will pick them up. If your child needs their hand held, we will hold their hand, then we will make sure that we are sanitizing before the next child. We are really going to be very consistent, but we know that from a social emotional lens, it's very important that we support your children. Um, in terms of dismissal, things are going to look very, very similar to how they've looked in the past. If your child is leaving from uh, nursery or JK at our 12:30 dismissal. They are. We will find out that you are at school. We're going to have a uh, um, a new system called School Pass that you'll learn a little bit more about next week, and it will help us to know when you are here. If you are waiting, the only difference is if you're waiting on foot for a nursery or JK student leaving at 12:30, you will be waiting in right outside the main building, our new building, or in if the weather is. In, if it's inclement weather, you can be in the loggia area where you'll be protected and covered. We will know you are here and we will bring your child out to you. There will be a carpool line. We will know you are here and we will bring your child to the car. And the same thing, similarly, that will be what happens during dismissal. Um, so for early childhood children, if you're in the carpool line, the teachers from your child's class will be walking your child out to you and putting them into the car. The only difference from years past is we will be unable to buckle your child in or some things that I sometimes did, which was physically go into your van and help your child get into their seat. We will not be entering your cars. We will help open doors and close doors, but we're not be able to buckle or enter into um, your vehicle this year. Children who are get, uh, going to be picked up by foot, we are going to have a system in place and again, our, one of our teachers will be walking your child out to you. More specifics will be coming about what that exactly will look like. Gary, you wanna go to our next slide? So I think we're, um, if we need to go to remote learning, and I really just wanna to touch on this, this is, we've shared this before, um, but if we do need to go to remote learning, and I just want to tell you, and again, everyone teases me that I am the, you know, my glass is overflowing. Um, I, my goal uh, is to keep the early childhood children at school as much as possible, unless the state tells us that we need to close or um, we recognize from a safety, health and safety lens that we need to close. Our goal is going to be keeping our early childhood children in our classrooms. We want to be at school and we want your children to be with us. But if in the event we do, you as a parent can expect a consistent distance learning schedule each week that will include live structured morning meetings, live small group offerings that focus on activities that will align with our social emotional learning curriculum, as well as Illinois preschool and kindergarten standards. We'll have individual teacher check-ins, we will um, have live opportunities for Shabbat, celebrations for Jewish studies, additional storytelling, all the curriculum that your children will be used to in a school setting, but obviously it will look slightly different. In terms of what's coming up, please make sure you mark your calendars and there will be additional information coming to you. So make sure you're reading every communication that comes out. Um, we're having our classroom preview days. Again, this will be virtual. Teachers will be in the classroom and you will all join via Zoom. They will send information about um, how you connect to those Zooms, but nursery will be on Tuesday, August 25th from 9.30 to 10. JK will be on Wednesday, August 26th from 9.30 to 10. And SK will be Thursday, August 27th from 9.30 to 10. There will also be a wonderful PTC welcome the first week of school and you will hear more about that and the dates um, as soon as they're available. And then please also mark your calendar for our EC back to school night. Again, this will be virtual. 
Um, but, and it will, there are, just so you know, our back to school night is for parents only. It's in the evening. Hopefully your, your kiddos will be in bed. Um, Wednesday, September 9th, we're going to have two identical sessions from 8 to 8.25 p.m. and 8.30 to 8.55 p.m. That's to ensure that those of you have more than one child in early childhood get to go to both. And then finally, mark your calendar for a Jeff event, um, Jewish Experiences for Family, or AKA Hagit Lewis. We also call her Jeff. Um, she will be doing an event for Rosh Hashanah, a beautiful challah cleanse. And I'm sure she is so creative that even though we won't be able to do it in person, it will be just as warm and lovely and welcoming and spiritual as it always is um, for Rosh Hashanah. And that will be September 16th at 7 p.m. So Gary, do we have any more questions that we need to address? We have a couple. Um, uh, the first, and, and I'll just, I'll ask you to unmute yourself because a couple of these are, are, uh, are safety or COVID specific. What should we do if our child has cold symptoms? Children often get colds, but considering symptoms are similar, should we test our child before sending them back to school? It is not easy to find a testing site that will do testing based on cold symptoms. Well, for children, I would say, uh, first of all, you should contact your pediatrician if you have any concerns about whether this is a cold versus COVID. Um, they're really the ones um, who should be guiding your decision as to whether you think it's a cold or it's COVID. And if they think it's COVID, they'll refer you to a site. Um, you should always be involving your physician in these conver conversations uh, about testing. Um, in terms of places that will um, allow you to uh, test, you know, Chicago has rolled out a number of sites that will test you regardless of what your symptoms are. Uh, I suggest that you uh, go to um, the Chicago.gov uh, to get a list of those sites as well, well as mobile sites. But cold cyst symptoms, certainly with a physician referral who suspects it may be COVID, are not difficult uh, to obtain a test uh, for. So that's the, how, what I would say with respect to that. Please involve your, your own pediatrician on trying to make that decision. Thanks, Audris. Uh, Abby, the next one is uh, about face shields for eating. Uh, to clarify, it's the goal to work towards nursery students to wear a face shield during lunchtime? That was a question. So we are, we're, we're starting very tight and we will work, we will, and I'm so sorry they're vacuuming outside my office if that's what you're hearing. <laughs> um, uh, so we are going to try and we're going to see how things go. Uh, um, that's where that's that's we're, we're trying to adhere to the most strict safety standards to keep everyone safe and we'll, we'll again we'll see how things go our goal is to try to be outside eating as much as possible um at least at the beginning of the year if that's the case it'll be very easy for us to social distance the kids and no one will have to wear a face shield um if we're in the classroom and we do have small classes with and large classrooms uh, if we're noticing that it's really challenging and it's not working out, we'll just continue to make sure the kids are more spaced out so they're six feet apart and then they don't have to wear the face shields. So um, we'll, we're going to do our best and try. We recognize that a lot of things that we'll be doing right now, we will see how they go and we will make adjustments as needed. Uh, let's take just one or so more uh, questions because then I know we want to be able to meet also with the new families. Uh, curious about carpooling with kids from different families. Is that an issue? I'm going to let Audra take that one. So I, we consider carpooling truly to be a, um, a safety issue. Uh, it's, you know, making sure that your child has safe and reliable transportation back in, uh, to school and back um, is a priority for parents. And, uh, and I think, you know, to make a statement about carpooling uh, would only create a situation in which we'd create uh, an unsafe situation for children. All it really means is that if there were to be uh, if someone in the car uh, were to develop a case of COVID, it would mean that everybody in that car would be considered a close contact. It would not really impact the cohort that those children are in, other than for the, the child who, who themselves is, is positive. And uh, we have a few other questions involving uh, expectations outside of school and uh, about play dates, things like that. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that Abby gets these, uh, these questions and we can, uh, we can have those replied to afterwards. So Abby, uh, thank you. Um, I know that we wanted to transition over to the new families, is that correct? 
Yeah, I just like to say for anyone who has any um, any specific questions, as I hope you all know, I am always available. So please do send me an email, let me know, and I will set a time that we can chat one on one. So um, please don't hesitate to do that. I'm happy to uh, make those have those conversations with you and I look forward to connecting. So to all, all you need to know about our availability is that Abby and I are actually still at school right now. <laughs> yes. Um, um, so I want to thank all of our families for uh, coming tonight. Again, we are so excited to welcome your children back. We love all of you so much. Um, we've really been anticipating this. Um, and we, again, uh, thank you for trusting us with your children. Um, it's, it means a lot to us and it's the most important thing that we do. It's sacred work and we're really um, so grateful that you're part of our community. So I'm gonna ask our families who have been at school before, you can go off and have your uh, evening. Before we do, evening. Abby, can I, can I just take a moment to publicly oh, sure. acknowledge uh, Abby and Hagid and, and, and the whole ECE team because what they have done in getting ready for uh, for our students to arrive has been nothing short of heroic. So thank you for everything you guys do as well. Thank you so much. So we are going to transition now to our new family welcome. Um, so we'll just take maybe 30 seconds. Thank you again to those families who joined us and are leaving us now. We look forward to seeing you soon. I am going to pass things to Katie, who is going to start our next uh, part of the program. Hi, everyone. It's so great to see you. See you. I'm at school tonight as well, and it's great to start seeing the teachers back and having some life in the building, and we're really looking forward to officially welcoming you. I know we've spent over a year getting to know uh, many of the new families, and we're delighted to actually welcome you in the front doors in just over a week. And we have a nice agenda tonight, a quick one just to introduce you to some of the key players in the Bernard Zell community who will help welcome you. We have some parent volunteers to introduce themselves, as well as some of our key leadership team members that you might not have met yet. So I'm really excited and thrilled to introduce Marina Gershman-Gorin. She's one of our PALS co-chairs, and hopefully you've all heard from your PALS over the summer and had a chance to meet them either virtually or in person. And she's really responsible for helping to welcome you into the community. So we will turn it over to Marina, and hopefully she can unmute herself. Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Bernard Zell. I'm so excited to see, meet, and chat with everyone. Of course, um, hope you've had a great summer, and I hope that everyone's been able to connect with their pals. Um, you know, such an important program. I, I guess especially now, times are a little different, so it's nice to have some familiar faces and be able to chat with other parents and, you know, new, meet for your children to meet other friends. Um, you know, we'll, we will strive to answer all your questions, obviously, throughout the whole year. Um, feel free to obviously contact us at any point. I think everyone has like their immediate point of contact, but you can contact any of the co-chairs at any point. We're all equal opportunists in this situation. So um, if we don't have an answer to your question, of course, we will find out whatever it is that you need. Um, we, um, just a few things, you know, we're going to talk about special events, key initiatives, things like that throughout the year. We will keep you as informed as possible, um, you know, from what obviously we know and we can always find out more. Um, there will be some more information coming soon as well about uh, ways to get involved at Bernard Zell, which is as a new family, I'm sure it's a little bit overwhelming because I remember when I came into school, seeing all of the committees and everything it's a little it's a little overwhelming but um you know feel free to get as involved as you can or wait until you feel more comfortable but it's it, you know i from my experience it's really fun and it's nice to get involved with the community so have a wonderful year and we will see you soon um i'm passing the mic along to becky altman and vince panazzo if i'm, I'm pronouncing it right <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Marina. Can everyone hear me? Sure. 
<laughs> um, I'm Becky Altman, and I am a parent of twins, uh, Maya and Lincoln, who will be starting third grade um, next week. And we are all equally excited to get back to school. Uh, I wish I was meeting you all in person, and hopefully we will get a chance to, to meet soon enough. But I, like Marina said, I just want to welcome everyone. I'm one of uh, this year's co-chairs for our annual campaign, along with Vince. And so I'm going to pass it over to him to talk a little bit about uh, the annual campaign and um, getting involved. Thanks so much, Becky. I really appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. How are you? It's nice to see you. I uh, wish uh, we could all, of course, uh, be in person to meet one another. And hopefully when we do meet in person, I will actually have had a haircut at that point since it's now six months. So uh, thanks for having me uh, this evening. Uh, it's an honor to be a co-chair of the annual campaign along with Becky this year. Um, my wife and I, uh, Lori Silverman, have a daughter, Sophie, who is starting second grade on the, the uh, 31st. And we could not be more excited, and Sophie couldn't be more excited either. She had a chance to, to get over to school today, and I saw a smile on her face that I haven't seen in some time, um, which has just been was phenomenal to see. So uh, it's just a really special uh, place, and, and I'm very passionate about it. As a result, I've gotten involved in many things in the school, uh, one of the things being the annual campaign, but also our capital campaign, which helped build our, our new building, uh, which is uh, absolutely tremendous. And in the coming weeks, uh, you're going to see some information come out from uh, Becky and I, as well as our, uh, our committee of over a dozen people that are working on the annual campaign. The annual campaign is really uh, the cornerstone for our fundraising efforts on an annual basis at the school. Uh, you'll hear about it a lot. And uh, the reason it's so critical is because it really is what allows us to make the investments we do in the school from our faculty being able to have additional education uh, and, and learn, uh, have um, uh, uh, new perspectives to bring to the table to investments in technology and safety infrastructure. It's absolutely fundamental to, to the, uh, the success of the organization. And most importantly, to actually keep tuition relatively affordable. Um, there's a lot of families we know that are struggling this year um, more than they ever have as a result of what's happening in the world. And so that's a really important thing that the annual campaign does is to help it make it so um, everybody who wants to be at the school can be at the school. Our community is incredibly generous. It's a community like I've, uh, I've never seen before. Um, and generous in the sense that we have a tremendous amount of giving from faculty to alumni, uh, to um, uh, parents. And in fact, our faculty even gives at 100%, which is just absolutely tremendous, an indication of the type of, of community that we have. So I know we all have many causes, um, especially now more than ever, that we're, uh, we're focused on. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to, to share that yeah, from as you learn more about the annual campaign, every dollar counts uh, within the organization, doesn't matter what the size is, also time counts. So um, any help that you can provide to us and, and as we really pursue this effort over the course of the year, please let us know if, uh, if you'd like to get involved in this. We'd love to have more and more people engaged in this, this effort. Last thing I'll say um, so before I transition this is that you know, personally, uh, Bernard Zell always rises to the top of uh, the list for us in terms of our family's giving because we know what the long-term implications are of an investment uh, in our, our community and in our kids. The return on investment is significant because as Dana Hurt, who's a member of our board, likes to say, Bernard Zell produces great human beings. And that is at a premium these days. And we, uh, if we can be part of actually producing great human beings that are the leaders of the future of, of, our, of our world, um, that is uh, uh, no better investment for, from my standpoint. So I look forward to meeting you all in the, uh, the, the coming weeks and months and, and years uh, ahead. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to Becky and I or any of the other members of the uh, annual campaign, campaign committee. And again, as I said, you'll be hearing from us again soon in the, in the coming weeks. I'm going to uh, turn it over now to, to Chef Ben, who's the uh, celebrity chef at uh, Bernard Zell and also my latke making partner every single year and uh, makes uh, the best latke I've ever had. So uh, <laughs> thanks, Ben. Thank you very much, Vince. Um, uh, good evening, everybody. I'm Chef Ben. And uh, mainly my job, because I work for a company called Sage Dining, we're a food service management company, but all the work that I do and all the work my staff does is at Bernard Zell and has been for the last nearly five years. So this would have been the fifth uh, Lights and Lotkeys competition this year. Um, we'll see, we'll see if we get there. Um, the three main concerns at the top of the list of my job, 
keeping our cash route policy stable and making sure that we can offer a, a wide variety of food within that. Making sure that we have a wide variety in general, because I know how quickly kids get bored with the food that they're offered. I have two kids of my own. I understand that in a very personal way. And the third part is safety. And that, that can be anything as, as simple as sanitation in the kitchen, which everybody on my staff are cooks. We don't really do like the lunch lady kind of thing here in, in my operation. Everybody who works for me is a cook. Um, in this particular environment, we've had a lot more changes to make in the kitchen as far as sanitation has gone. And we've got that taken care of. The company that we work for has a lot of resources for us. We're all masked up all the time. But more importantly for you, if any of your children have allergies, that is information that will come to us from the nurse's office, and we will have that taken care of. I'd like to echo Abby's uh, notion from earlier. We've got you covered. We really do. Um, we will be sending food every day to all of the EC classrooms, uh, individually wrapped or portioned, so we won't have shared equipment. We won't have shared uh, service tools and that sort of thing. So we're giving the teachers in the rooms as much support as we can to keep everything as, as sanitary and, and separate in the rooms as we can. Um, we provide a snack every day as well as a lunch. And I encourage all of you to download our app. And now that everything's run on apps, um, the Sage, it's called Touch of Sage. And it has our menus on there. And there's a ton of information in there from what we're serving when all the way through allergen filters and the ingredients, nearly the recipes. And um, I'm just like Abby, I'm very, very easy to get a hold of. I'm always happy to talk to parents or the kids. That's always been one of the greatest benefits of this job is, is interacting with the kids as much as we'll be allowed to this year. Uh, the menus that we're starting with this year are going to be very, very simple because we need to make sure that we can execute them uh, safely. And then from there, once we get comfortable, and the teachers get comfortable with it, we will add more complexity and stuff that's more fun, you know, as we see that, that we can do that. Um, again, I'm very easy to get hold of. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm always around. So please feel free to reach out. And um, yeah, I think that's all that I have. That's the broad strokes of, of my job. Um, I'm happy to turn this over to uh, Hagit to talk to you about uh, the Jewish Life programming. Okay, hi everyone, sorry. So thank you, Chef Ben, and we are so, so lucky to have Chef Ben. And I wanna say a few things. One, whenever you came on the tour, we emphasize the community, the Kayla and the Mishpacha. And I don't care what COVID is going to do, it's, it's, we, this Kayla is going to be stronger. You're part of this Mishpacha. You're now in my home, I'm in your home, and we will continue. And Gary, if it's okay with you, I'm going to add one more title into my title because I have a lot of titles in here. But I want to say that I'm also a matchmaker and not for your kids. <laughs> Hopefully, if they get married, please invite me. But I want to take you, I want to be partner with you on this Jewish journey. You enter in this mishpacha with a lot of talent and a lot of knowledge I don't know about. And there are a lot of programs that you may want us to, to create, and I'll be happy to create and find my people to do that. And so once you tell me what you want for you, for your mishpacha, we will create it. That's the thing that I will do for you to make you feel part. You will come in, maybe you can't get into the school now. We will do anything. I told Abby, I want, if you know how to blow the chauffeur or call the chauffeur, Come tell me, I want you in the parking lot so the whole month the kids can hear the shofar. I also told Debbie today, not Gary yet, I want to build a sukkah outside. If you know and you can help me to bring it, I already know who in the call you I'm going to call. Uh, come and help us. Let us know. If you want to learn Chef Ben and Vince did the uh, latkes, we are going to do it this year. We'll do it in the house. We'll see how Vince makes his latkes. We'll see how Chef Ben, anything you wish to learn. Um, through COVID last year, we had, and we will have challah, we had brisket making, we have everything from learning together. I want you to feel that you are part of this keila, you're part of this mishpacha, and we're here um, to go with you. So, Bruchim Abaim, welcome to my home today, and I can't wait to be with you. Anything you need, contact all of us. Laila <laughs> Tov. 
And I'm passing it now to Katie. <laughs> to Brian. Brian. Wonderful. Thank you, Hagit, and thank you to everybody. It's, um, it's a pleasure to see so many people and to, um, and to meet so many new families tonight. Um, I'm Brian. I'm the Director of Marketing at Bernard Zell, and I just want to call everyone's attention to a few important places where you can find crucial information, but I also want to give you some information about how we are going to be communicating with all of you throughout the school year. Um, so first of all, um, the important places to look for some of that crucial information are both the parent portal and BZ Connect. Um, the parent portal is so easy to find. You just go to the top of the website and you click on parents, or you can go to bernardzell.org slash login and you use your login credentials. And that's where you're gonna find a lot of the information like the parent handbook and the school directory um, and a lot of that, those crucial pieces of content. And once you're there, there's a login from the parent portal to take you to BZ Connect. And I think a lot of people are already familiar with BZ Connect, but this is a place um, you're, you're likely familiar because this is where you can access your forms, smart tuition, Magnus Health Suite, all of those um, crucial pieces are housed under BZ Connect. Um, but it's also where there's a calendar, there's information about all of your children and their classes. Um, and you can also sync that calendar in BZ Connect with your personal calendar to stay up to date with everything that's happening um, at school. And we'll provide a little bit more information in some of our upcoming communications uh, that gives you all of the step-by-step -step directions on how you can connect the BZ Connect calendar with your personal calendar. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention tonight is um, how we'll be communicating with you throughout the year. So. Uh, You've likely already been getting our reopening communications and being an unusual summer um, and, and, and being that this is um, something that's a little bit different than in years past, we're communicating more frequently throughout the summer. Uh, so you feel like you have the appropriate information and you're prepared uh, to send your kids back. But when we get back into the normal routine, um, we send a school newsletter called Manishma that goes out every other Wednesday while school is in session. Um, and you can expect the first one in your inbox on September 9th and every other Wednesday afternoon following the 9th. Um, Manishma is a piece, while it will certainly include dates and information about upcoming events, um, it is in essence more of a reflective piece that allows us to tell stories about what's happening in classrooms, um, hear more about faculty. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely give you the announcements of what you can expect in the future, but we really hope it's a piece that's um, a storytelling vehicle so we can keep you updated about all of the exciting things that have happened at the school. Um, the other place where you're gonna find out information about what's coming up is the weekly This Week at Bernard Zell, which is gonna land in your inbox every Sunday at 5 p.m. This is really a straight calendar listing um, of all of those crucial dates and times. Um, and if it's an event that's happening virtually, the links to those, uh, to those Zoom meeting rooms where you'll be able to join. And again, that's gonna um, land in your inbox every Sunday at five o'clock while school's in session. The first one being the, first, the Sunday before the first day of school, that's the 30th. Um, and then finally, the last thing I wanted to mention is our Bright Arrow Emergency Communication System. Um, should there be an emergency, should we have to evacuate, or should we have to cancel school suddenly due to an extreme weather event or a snow day, um, we will reach out to you um, via the Bright Arrow emergency communication system, which could be a text message or it could be a recorded phone call. Um, and that will, uh, that will uh, happen through the information you provide in BZ Connect. So that's makes it even more important to keep your information updated in BZ Connect so that uh, we can contact you in the event of an emergency. And we'll be sending at least one test of that system likely in the fall. Um, so uh, it's just an important system to know. And, um, and I should also just mention bernardzell.org slash reopening is kind of our home base this year as we provide resources about everything we're doing to make sure that the campus 
and every classroom is as safe and healthy as possible as we prepare to welcome students back. So it's another good place to take a look at that is constantly being updated throughout the summer and will continue to be updated as we move into the school year. Um, so that's all I have and I will echo Ben and Abby and everyone else. Um, if, you can, if you need anything, you're always welcome to reach out. In fact, I encourage you to do so. Send me an email, I'd love to be in touch. Um, thank you for your time and it's uh, a pleasure to see you. Thank you, Brian. I, I do want to tack one thing on to that um, while we're talking about the portal and what have you. Uh, I want to encourage all of our new families to complete the form on the parent portal for your security badge. Uh, that will involve you uploading your photo so we can have a badge created for you. And that reminder comes courtesy of Candace Chesler. So thank you very much, Candace. Thanks, everyone. We really want to thank all of our speakers. You've been wonderful. And we do have a few minutes if anybody wants to stay on. I realize it's getting late, but we're here for you. And we've invited all of our panelists to stay around for questions and answers. So feel free to just unmute yourselves. If you do have a question, or you can raise your hand uh, via the chat, and we can call on you if that's easier. So feel free to take a minute to think about any questions. You can also chat it in to Gary or myself, and we'll make sure to get you an answer. And actually, we do have one already. Uh, this is uh, really partly for, for uh, Abby and partly for Chef Ben. Uh, sorry to be such a Jewish mother, but food is love. Just curious because this is the first time my daughter will be eating lunch at school. Does everyone get the same meal each day or do we choose ahead of time or do they choose the day of? And you want me to take it or you're gonna take it? Uh, why don't you start and then I'll uh, join in. Okay. So we love a good Jewish mother, so don't <laughs> worry about it. Um, so for early childhood is slightly different. I have to say our teachers and Ben have really gotten to know the palates of our children and we do really try to expand them. So we like to make colorful, colorful plates with our children, but we've worked completely over the summer with Chef Ben to create really appropriate early childhood menus to make sure they have what they need. So different from first grade and above, you will not be making choices for your children's uh, meal uh, during the school year. We will have many, many things for them to try. And as we continue to learn about what they like and what they don't like, we will um, continue to uh, tweak our menus for the early childhood students. And that's, that's really the nice thing about um, operating within the building itself is that we can make those choices and those changes, not necessarily day of, but as we see the students enjoying or not enjoying certain things, we can tailor the menus to those rooms. And that's how we've been operating for the last couple of years to the point now where, yeah, Abby and I have a really pretty good idea of what the kids are gonna wanna eat. From my side of it, we always provide them with uh, fruit, and that fruit tends to be different pretty much every day. We always provide them with, you know, uh, hummus or a lentil salad or something like that. And I've been shocked at the variety of things that kids at this school will be willing to try, and then what they enjoy and what they ask for later. It's been it's been an education on my side. It turns out my kids are kind of picky, but the kids at the school do uh, eat a, a broad variety of stuff. Just be warned that your kids may come home and say, can you make Chef Friends brisket? That will happen, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs>